What does a DNR actually mean? DNR, or do not resuscitate, at the most basic level, means that after your heart or breathing stops spontaneously, we will not bring you back to life. A DNR usually encompasses four things. Number one, we will not do CPR on you. Number two, we will not defibrillate or shock you. Number three, we will not give you emergency medicines to assist your heart. And number four, we will not intubate you or put a breathing tube in you. The first three things on this list refer specifically to cardiac or heart-related interventions. The fourth item refers to your lungs. It is a pulmonary intervention. In most instances, in saying that you are a DNR, you are essentially saying you do not want any of these four items if you were to die. In some facilities, they instead use the term DNR slash DNI, which means do not resuscitate slash do not intubate. In these facilities, DNR might only refer to the first three cardiac interventions, with the DNI referring to the latter pulmonary intervention. In cases where the DNR slash DNI nomenclature is used, you could technically be a DNR but still be intubated if you have not elected the DNI part of the equation. Another option that is sometimes offered is a modified DNR. In a modified DNR, patients can pick and choose which of the four interventions they want and which they do not want. In some cases, a modified DNR can make sense. If you periodically go into a lethal rhythm that could be fixed with one or two shocks, you might elect to be a modified DNR shock only. Or if you don't want anything heart-related but would be okay with a breathing tube for a set amount of time if you couldn't breathe, you could be a modified DNR intubate only. However, in many cases, a modified DNR doesn't make sense because many of these interventions work best in tandem. For instance, cardiac medications put into your IV can assist your heart, but they don't work unless you get CPR to circulate your blood and get the medicines there in the first place. So saying you want medications, but no CPR, doesn't really do anything beneficial for you. Or saying you only want to be intubated but no CPR may not help because what good is having a machine to breathe for you if your heart isn't beating? Ultimately, you need to have a conversation with your healthcare provider to ensure that we give you the care that makes sense for you. Now this next part is very important. When you are unconscious or incapacitated, a surrogate decision maker will be chosen for you. In most cases, this is your legal next of kin. If you are married, this is your spouse. If you are unmarried, it may default to your adult children or to your parents. The laws of your state will dictate who the next of kin is. Now listen, your surrogate decision maker can choose not to honor your DNR. If you wish to be a DNR and your heart stops, your spouse or next of kin can tell us, never mind, do CPR, and in most cases we have to abide by their wishes. So if being a DNR or not, is important to you, make sure that your decision maker is on the same page as you. If you are concerned that your legal next of kin will not honor your wishes, consider having a legal document naming someone else, someone who you trust to follow your wishes, as your durable power of attorney for health care. That is the best way to ensure that you get or don't get the care that you desire. Hope that helps. Great questions. Keep them coming.